So, um, let's just shuffle them to um, see what wisdom and lessons want to come through for Cancerians. And this is, generally speaking, sun, moon, or rising. Although I do uh, sort of recommend that you watch your rising um, vid sort of video first because this, this will be the most accurate in terms of um, house placements and therefore the areas of life that are likely to be affected. So um, the question that I'm asking is what wisdom or lessons does this Sagittarius lunar eclipse have for Cancerians over the next two weeks? What, what do you need to become aware of? What do you need to release? What is the time to integrate? what wants to show itself at this particular full moon. So. so the first card out is Caput Draconis, which is the head of the dragon. So this is traditionally associated with the North Node, which is usually um, exalted at the solar eclipse, so at the new moon. So it's with it coming out here, there's, there's this inversion, this, uh, this message about um, soul lessons, soul contracts, um, and, you know, get, getting ready for a new cycle, which, as I said, a new six-month cycle will start for you at the uh, the solar eclipse in cancer that happens later in june so i think it's just drawing your attention to that so this is puer now puer is the boy this is mars in aries energy it is fire um, so this is earth this is fire so this is really pointing to that mars in um, the t-square with mars that, that i talked about in the astrological forecast um, so it may be some kind of external event that um, is designed to sort of uh, jolt you or kind of wake you up. I mean, that's what eclipses essentially are about. So um, it may be that something in you needs to become awake to, you know, a, poten a potential dynamic in your life. Then we have Fortuna Major. Now this is the sun in Leo. Uh, Fortuna Major is probably the most auspicious card in or geomantic symbol that you can get. Um, it's really positive energy. So um, this suggests that even though you know you might be sort of knocked a little bit off center, uh, and that there might be important soul lessons or karmic lessons um, kind of coming in, that there are also some great gifts that could be um, coming out of whatever you experience over the next couple of weeks. And then we have Albus, which is white in Latin. Uh, so this is Mercury in Gemini. So this is air energy. So it's interesting. We've got, we've got earth, we've got two lots of fire, and then we've got air. So no water yet, um, which is your, your natural element. So I think it's definitely talking about a need to balance elements. So those are your four initial cards. Um, uh, Albus is about a blank page or kind of a blank slate, so it could be starting fresh again, so reiterating the idea of a new cycle. Um, it's also about purity, it, um, it's associated with lilies, so it can be sometimes about mourning. Um, and in this sense, um, it's, it's perhaps highlighting the moon's position in Gemini, I mean the sun's position in Gemini um, at this particular full moon. So something that, you know, um, some, something there that wants to be kind of reset. Or perhaps there's some message that wants to come through. Um, so, you know, it might be useful to actually do a little bit of journaling um, over the next couple of weeks to see what information comes out. And I'm going to pause the video at this point and just do the conversion and then I'll be back in a sec. So here is your conversion sheet, Cancer. Um, as you can see, um, I've already done all the conversions for you. Um, if you're interested in um, trying out Geomancy, I have put this conversion sheet on my website, so you can download it for free. 
um, and it kind of explains in a step-by-step -step process how to actually um, go about making conversions but anyway I won't dwell on this for too long I'll just say that um, uh, even though the conversion sheet talks about laying out the cards in consecutive order um, there's an alternative system which is what I use based on the order of the golden dawn where the four mothers become the cardinal and sort of get filled into the cardinal houses then the um, the daughters become the succeedant and then the, the four nieces are in the cadent houses but anyway let's get into your reading and see what it uh, what it means so as you can see I've already laid out all the cards for you um, so those original four that I drew are now in the cardinal houses and um, then I've laid out the rest to follow so um, it's, so it's really interesting actually because um, it's kind of reiterating the theme of the union we've got conjunctio as your final card or outcome which is union so this is the the alchemical sort of like marriage um, the union of opposites to create a third thing and then we've got puella and puer so these are almost like this sort of yin and yang energies that we were talking about earlier so um, th there really seems to be an overall theme for you about um, the sort of bringing together or the union of opposites or polarities and of course polarities is a massive um, theme you know at the Gemini and Sagittarius you know we've got Gemini and Sagittarius as our kind of zodiacal kind of pole in which the Sun and the Moon are going to be positioned and both of them are bicorporeal signs so um, this means that they are double bodied so it really emphasizes this idea of separation consciousness duality which is kind of the, the predominant way in which we perceive things in the material realm when we are embodied the so-called 3d realm and so I think what this particular eclipse for you is going to be about based on the geomancy reading is about um, kind of learn to harmonize these opposites kind of bringing them together in a kind of conjunction um, so that they you can work in a more balanced way but anyway let's get into the reading a little bit more and we can see what else kind of comes out so as I said, when, whenever we start a reading, we look at the uh, first house because that tells us something about your state of mind or condition at the time of the full moon. So, as I said, we've got Caput Draconis here, which is about soul lessons, soul um, contracts. So it could be to do with a relationship of some kind, but it's also usually about um, new beginnings. It's 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 kind of information coming in. So if we have a look at our booklet and we we read the keywords for that. Uh, Caput Draconis is associated with beginnings, an inner threshold, entrances coming in, an upper boundary or threshold, doorway leading in, or changes for the better. So it's really interesting. The, the image for it is a doorway with footprints leading toward it or a tall tree. So of course here we've got family tree, uh, the idea of family tree or the tree of life um, are two ways that you could sort of potentially read this. but. This is, I think, setting you up for a new cycle that will start at the, the June, I think it's 21st, this, the solstice eclipse that we have in Cancer. So that will be a, kind of your reset because it will be Cancer season. And on top of that, you will have this eclipse that will kind of start a new six month cycle for you. So this is really about kind of clearing the slate um, in order to bring in potential gifts. So I think, you know, as part of a process of kind of closing closing out in order to start something fresh um, I think it, there's a need to take in new information um, in order to perhaps see the past in a different way because it also after all we are in retrograde season and the retrograde Venus is with the Sun so I think it's becoming really clear about learning lessons from the past and kind of getting nuggets so seeing maybe pivoting or seeing situations in a different way um, and taking in these lessons, consolidating, so that you're ready to make a fresh start. Um, so if we, if we take this as being um, Cancer as your first house, then um, we're looking at the um, at Venus and uh, the Sun being in your twelfth house. This is Gemini, and here we've got Acquisitio, which is um, again a really auspicious geomantic figure this is Jupiter in Sagittarius so this is 
really expansive energy it's very um, um, optimistic um, this is about kind of acquiring but it's acquiring not on a material level but on a spiritual level so this is really about as I was saying spiritual gifts so I really feel that this is strongly emphasizing what the astrology was saying which is that at this time you need to open yourself up to spiritual gifts that you may not necessarily have been aware of but which are latent in other words they may have been um, inherited from previous lifetimes um, you know things that you knowledge you acquired then or it could be through connecting with a spirit guide um, or you know a, a part of you that has been sort of hidden or latent or unconscious up till now but I think the great gifts and rewards are going to be open to you great wisdom that you can tap into if you allow yourself to open to it that's one of the themes I think here and then if we look at the sixth house here we've got Tristia now this is Saturn in Aquarius and of course Saturn is currently in Aquarius it transited into Aquarius um, just after the March equinox um, at the the uh, the spring the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere so um, it's currently retrograde and it's now retracing its steps over those initial degrees of Aquarius so I think you want to sort of cast your mind back um, between March and May and consider what's happened to you particularly um, when it comes to health routines pets everyday life work work colleagues and and the practical application of spirituality um, routines all that type of stuff to see if there is anything there that needs to potentially be improved upon um, you know because Saturn is going retrograde so you're getting a second chance to sort of go over that s stuff and maybe improve or tweak routines um, improve health in a way that's going to benefit you going forward once Saturn you know changes direction and, and starts moving forward again um, but I'm going to read you the keywords for this so that you it can kind of spark off some ideas so Tristia is associated with sorrow, grief, suffering, tears and pain. So this could be physical pain as well as spiritual pain, but more than likely physical pain, given that we're talking about the sixth house here. Um, illness, uh, depleted energy, uh, feeling diminished, remorse, head down or fallen. So it's really about, um, oh, and one of the images associated with it is the fallen tower which of course reminds us of the tarot card the tower so it's possible that you know during this time you've had some kind of shock or that the eclipse itself could act as that kind of catalyst that sort of brings down a structure or a tower that needs to go and in rather than sort of clinging onto it all and kind of almost exacerbating the pain because you know you know what we resist persists you don't want to be um, hanging on to pain and sort of illness and depletion um, see it as a clearing of the slate so that fresh energy can come in it may be that you know this is a getting this is getting rid of what's negative in order for these these gifts um, to kind of come in so something to, to consider maybe pivoting when it comes to that so um, then if we have a look at where um, Mars is we're talking about Pisces so um, if we think about this is cancer so uh, this would be Leo uh, this would be Virgo Libra um, Scorpio Sagittarius Capricorn um, and then uh, Aquarius and Pisces here so we're talking about the ninth house um, which is all about wisdom so it's kind of learning new things it's spiritual wisdom it's signs and um, omens from the divine it's dreams sort of prophetic dreams and here we've got Jupiter in Pisces so that's really quite apt um, you know this this kind of Piscean energy here and um, it's really interesting because Laetitia is associated with joy so it's the, almost the opposite of that kind of Mars energy which is sort of aggravating so it could actually be that Mars here for you is about vital energy, sort of vitality or kind of new life. Um, and I'll just read to you the the main keywords so that um, you know it might spark something off in you. So this is happiness, joy, laughter, 
singing, good health, which is very different to Tristia in the sixth house, enthusiasm, which is of course being filled by the god um, in Greek, um, unrestrained gladness and optimism, grace, which is I think a wonderful way of describing this particular placement, and lightness of spirit. So I do think it's kind of saying that there is a need perhaps to sort of uh, clear out any kind of gloom and doom that might be lingering as perhaps as a reaction to um, what's been going on with the COVID-19 pandemic and being in lockdown and you know um, the, the fear and the sort of um, all the negative um, associations with health and, and what have you that, that this has sort of brought up for a lot of people and I think it's saying you know you need to sort of cultivate a kind of unbearable life as a being so um, allowing yourself um, to open to the potential for joy, grace, and all these wonderful, an influx basically of spirit, of inspiration, of intuitive knowledge, which again, I think reiterates this idea of acquisitio really quite nicely. So I think it's really about opening yourself up to higher faculties, to spiritual gifts, to knowledge that you have access to that you didn't even know you had access to. Um, and kind of connecting to um, higher states of consciousness, basically. Um, so that's all really positive. Um, and then if we look at um, at, at our, our right and left witness, we see these cards echoed, you know, in the spread itself. So we've got Puer here in the fourth house, um, and we've got Puella in the eighth house. So these are, are quite, I mean, it's quite interesting, actually, um, I mean, there's certain resonances between the fourth and the eighth house, kind of traditionally, um, in terms of the way that houses were originally named. So the fourth house is not just associated with roots and family, but also with what is below the earth, because, you know, this would be the, the horizon and this, this would be above the horizon, this would be below the horizon. So the fourth house is associated with mining with what's underground, as well as, as I say, with, with roots. So it's kind of the soil. Um, the kind of muck, the mud in which the lotus kind of grows. So um, that's that's the fourth house on the one hand, it's also farming, agriculture, that type of thing. And, and then the eighth house has also been associated with falling into the underworld. So that's because, um, you know, the sun um, moves f in, in, in a clockwise direction um, during the day. And so, you know, it culminates in the midheaven and then it starts to decline. Um, as it moves towards sunset position, which is here, so this is uh, this is definitely a falling into a falling down. This is downward movement. Um, so the eighth house is, is traditionally associated with um, wills and with alimony and um, you know with kind of inheritances, things that we share with the <coughs> significant others in the seventh. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> So it can be things like bank loans and, and that kind of thing, but more than likely it is resources, whether they are spiritual or, you know, f uh, or kind of immaterial, so trust, intimacy, that kind of thing. Um, also encounters with um, significant others in the spirit world, so this can also be about knowledge or relationships with the unseen. Um, and then uh, we've got this connection to um, family roots, things that we inherit from our fathers usually. So names, for example, our surname, um, as well as the, you know the idea of kind of the landed gentry where they they inherited um, the, the estate or kind of land and that kind of thing from their ancestors. So there seems to be this link to the, the idea of kind of um, legacy. So some kind of legacy, perhaps something that's come down through your bloodline, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> some kind of gift that's come down to you through um, through your DNA or through your bloodline, um, you know, psychic gifts sometimes come down to us through the, the family line. Um, so we've got Mars here, which is kind of pointing to, um, this is kind of active energy, so this is initiating yang kind of energy and then we've got the, the yin energy here which is more passive so it's receiving and that's quite interesting because this is a, as i said it's about sharing of resources so it's almost like opening yourself up 
to the possibility of sharing um, certain resources with significant others and as I say these this could be spirit guides for example so that somehow there seems to be a need to marry these two things up um, so maybe it's about kind of <clears throat> a sort of um, a coming together of your spiritual family with your kind of ancestral roots and, and that kind of thing um, but this seems to be the active energy and this is the more passive energy so this is opening to receive and this is actively kind of um, sharing or nurturing kind of, kind of energy. So I'm just going to read you the the keywords for these two <clears throat> figures. So Puer is beginnings, conflict, competition, war, violence, sex, masculine active energy. So this is purpose, focus and drive. It can be warriors, sons, servants, pages and bachelors. So it could have something to do with a male relative. Um, that's something to bear in mind or perhaps an ancestor who was some kind of literal warrior you know maybe they were a soldier or something of that ilk and then um, this is the more sort of passive energy so this this is the divine feminine energy this is the divine masculine energy so this is relationships romantic success women's issues harmony beauty physical attractiveness pleasure social events friendships so this is um, you know seemingly more positive energy um, this this is the element of air this is Venus in Libra and this is fire so this is um, again I think you know reiterating the idea of um, this being this the sort of stronger energy and this being this somewhat more receptive energy because of course air the element of air is actually the element of the heart so that's just something to bear in mind and of course the sign of cancer is associated with, with the heart area in terms of like you know zodiac or menesthesia in man so um, there does seem to be some kind of idea here about opening the heart and opening up the sort of inner um, kind of centers or chakras or um, to receiving some kind of grace or inspiration from the divine um, and that somehow you need to act when it comes to home family um, ancestral gifts um, inheritances so maybe it's a kind of a, a more taking up or, or, or an active mining of your ancestral gifts, you, the, the gems and the nuggets that, that may be sort of stored here that you're not necessarily utilizing properly. So that's really interesting. As I say, your reading ends quite positively with this idea of union. So I'm just going to read uh, the um, keywords for that. So this is the union of opposites. It's about balance. It's about conjunctions. It's about alliances. So it can be family alliances, or it can be alliances, as I said, with spirit guides. Um, it's collaboration. It's combined efforts. It's interactions. It's marriages, and recovery of things lost. So, um, you know, it could be, as I said, that there's this this marriage of the the mind and the body. Um, it could also be the marriage of the sort of um, our, our literal our genetic roots our blood roots with our more spiritual um, kind of ancestors and teachers you know when you when you learn something or you have a guru you you said to be in the lineage of a particular you know kind of guru or figure so there's that to consider but it is a really wonderful um, reading actually it, it does suggest that this is a time you know this particular eclipse for you is a time of clearing out sorrow welcoming in grace and and sort of divine gifts and abilities and you know learning to balance opposite energies so the masculine and the feminine energies so i think overall a really really positive reading for you cancer i hope it's been helpful if it has i would love it if you would hit the like button um, if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel you might want to consider just hitting the bell so that you um, you're always notified if i put out new readings or forecasts but I'm wishing you all the best for the upcoming two weeks of this waning moon cycle. And I'll catch you again for the solstice and the new moon solar eclipse um, later on in June.